Presented by Tag Heuer. Official timekeeper. Final formation lap here in Slovakia for the opening race, the Slovakian race weekend, second race weekend of the 2016 FIA World Touring Car Championship. Cars running round towards the grid for the last time. Let's hear from Lada's Nikki Katzberg. Hello, everyone. This is the warm-up lap for the first race, WTCC Slovakia ring. Yeah, basically trying to keep some temperature in the tires, nothing special, don't want to overstress them. Just following the guys. Um, yeah, nothing much to do really, just make sure the tires don't lose a lot of temperature, keep the pressures up a little bit. For the rest is just cruising around. Um, yeah, I must say I'm really looking forward to this race. We've been showing great pace this weekend. Um, Always a bit nervous for the start. This is uh, not one of my stronger points, so I'm gonna try to have a good start this race. But more importantly, the second race where I'm starting on P2. So strategy for the first race is to basically take it easy because uh, I wanna make sure I can start on the first row in the second race, so I don't wanna do any damage. I don't want to do any damage in the first race, but obviously I do want to go forward. I think we have the speed to go forward, so I'm definitely going to try. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I hope you guys wish me luck. I hope you enjoy the race. And, uh, yeah, have fun. This was uh, Nick Cutsworth in the warm-up lap. I'm going to tune out now and focus on the start of the race. Ciao. We wish him good luck, especially with the start, because in Mach 3 yesterday, he was caught out by the lights coming on halfway through the 15-second countdown to the beginning of the start procedure, and uh, fluffed the start completely stalled. Took about five or six seconds to restart the car, and unfortunately, then Lada's chances of winning the Mach 3 team time trial went by the by, which then left it in the hands of Honda and Citroen. And we had what will never be surpassed, probably, as the closest ever Mach 3 finish when they tied to the thousandth of a second. There is another way it could be closer, and that's to have all three teams tied to the thousandth, but I'm not going to put much money on that happening in my lifetime or anyone else's. But it is incredible that uh, two separate cars, two separate manufacturers, design teams, three different drivers in each team, 12 kilometers, and they tie. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable. <laughs> it is insane. Insane. Inseparable by any visual or mechanical judgment. So on board with Nicky Katzberg. He'll be looking for a good start. As he says, he and on either side of him, Ivar Muller and Jose Maria Lopez in their dark red Citroëns, they will be looking to keep the cars in one piece for race two, where they start in the top three. But for now, it's Hugo Vallant who is ready for the start of our opening race. The grid is complete at the Slovakia ring, the third race of the 2016 FIA World Touring Car Championship. The opening race here in Slovakia, Lada on pole position with Hugo Vallon, third with Gabriele Tarquini, second on the grid on the left hand side of your pitch is Medi Banani Sitchin. Great start from Chaga Montero and from Gabriele Tarquini, but Hugo Valente is battling Medi Banani. Banani's got the lead, Montero second, Huff goes through on the inside to third. Valente will go the long way around the outside of Rob Half. Tries to shut the door, little bump. And Tarquini in fifth, Huff in fourth. Valente still not in third. And Huff is on the grass on the inside. He's going to make it extra difficult to get round turn two. Montero follows Medi Banani. Looks like everybody just about got through. And Huffy does make third place his own for the moment. But Richard Coleman, the two yellow larders behind him, all three yellow larders have shown great pace this weekend. It's by no means certain as the third car goes off. Nicky Katzberg in the background and will rejoin last. No, no, by no means certain that Valentin and Tarquini will be beaten by anybody here, although Lopez is right behind the two of them and so is Muller. Yeah, you have to say that Valente doesn't have a great reputation as a starter, and it, uh, he certainly didn't set the world alight there off uh, pole position. And uh, now he's wheel-to-wheel -wheel with Gabrielli. 
who is not going to give him much room, even if he is his own teammate. Gabriele had the inside line, and Hugo was in trouble there. Through go Lopez and Muller, and Lada are now down to one car at the front. In fourth place is Tarquini, then Lopez, then Muller, then Frederick Ekblom in the blue Volvo, the first, uh, beg your pardon, Ted Bjork in the first of the Volvos. And he has got a Citroen up behind him. He hasn't, he's got Norbert Mikulish behind him in the Honda. Tarquini with scars already, and we're still only two-thirds away around the first of 11 laps. Benani leads, but Montero, who nearly won in France, almost caught Ivan Muller in the fire uh, Jose Maria Lopez in the final laps of the main race could well be on for victory here because Bonani locks up Valente with Chilton going around the outside and behind him De Moustier they're the other two Sebastian Loeb racing Citroens but that lock up from Bonani might well have cost him the lead we're not seeing it at the moment but as he comes across the line Bonani is just in front of Montero, and Montero is looking to get by. And Victor Shapovalov in Lada is not looking best pleased. No, and I'm worried for Hugo as well. If you look at Hugo's car next time he's in shot, you'll see that there's uh, a lot of grass in his radiator, and uh, that will be stopping the cooling to the engine, and it's probably going to give him some problems in the next lap or so. The other interesting dynamic to watch out for is that Banani has 80 kilos of, uh, of ballast uh, this weekend, as do all the other Citroens. Yep. And uh, you'll see that uh, they'll probably start to struggle with tyre wear towards the end of the race, but uh, Ivan and Jose Maria are having a bit of a ding-dong already at this uh, early yes. stage. Now, interestingly, Banani's first lap, 2 minute 10.3, Lopez 2.12.9, and Muller 2.13.3 but then they worked their way through more traffic than Bonani did away from the standing start. And of course, they started further back, so their lap was actually longer than his was, if you follow me. Um, their run-up lap, at any rate. Gabriele Tarquini in fourth place. Jose Maria Lopez now dropping back a little. And Ted Bjork, this is good news for Lopez, is starting to give advice. Oh no, and Muller's got by. That's why Lopez has dropped back. So Muller's got by Lopez. Did we see that happen? Was I looking at the timing I screen? Was, I think that was on the exit of turn two. I think it's just in the back of the shot. I think uh, turn two, one of them seemed to get, kick up a bit of dust. And whether that was Lopez and then Muller just got to run alongside into three, I don't know. Looking at timing screens always means that something's going to happen to the pictures that the viewers are watching. Well, there you can see the red, white and green trio out front. Bernani Montero half as quickly as that. Only covered by half a second of three of them. Muller now freed up to try and attack Tarquini because Ted Bjork is going to be looking at the back of Jose Maria Lopez and Muller is reeling Tarquini in fast. Now, he may get by, but don't forget, 11 laps of this abrasive circuit, nearly six kilometers long, he's got another eight to go. Tarquini may well come back at the Citroen later in the race. Muller's best chance is the next three laps or so. And to be honest, if, you want to, if you've got to get past somebody, you don't want it to be Gabrielli. He's a wily old fox, and uh, he knows exactly where to put his race car. Although, the one man that Gabrielli will allow a clean pass is Ivan Muller. Everybody else, he fights tooth and nail. If Ivan's got a quicker car, Gabrielli does let him get through. Well, there's just... That, you know, there's that, that history between them of being teammates and rivals for so long. Just ask Hugo Valente because uh, I think that he's pretty pretty rough with him really on yes. that opening lap. And uh, if I was uh, in the larder management, I probably wouldn't be too happy with how my drivers behaved on uh, on that first lap. But the big problem is when you've got two or three cars in the same team, they're going to be at pretty much the same speed and from a pretty much similar grip position, they're going to end up in the same bit of tarmac in the same corner. So it is difficult. I mean, we've had multi-car ups between teammates several times before, and. The rule always has to be avoid the yellow car if you're in a yellow car. Don't hit the red car if you're in a red car. But yes, Victor's far from a happy camper at the moment. There's Hugo Valente behind Tom Chilton. They are ninth and tenth at the moment. Tom Chilton in the number three Citroen up to ninth place ahead of our opening race pole man, Hugo Valente. You've got to think that Valenti is nursing perhaps a little bit of suspension derangement, but that grill at the front is green from all the freshly mown grass that he's run over, and that's probably not helping. The underbonnet temperatures are fairly severe on these turbocharged cars. Anyway, if there's little cooling, that is definitely going to impact his speed. 
Ted Bjork there in the background just had a little look down the inside of Lopez as well. He's obviously wanting to get on with it. And maybe that's the first sign that the Citroen's starting to struggle with its tyres on the weight. Ekblom going up the order here in his Volvo. And that was Ekblom, yes, inside uh, De Moustier, wasn't it? Quite sure what the onboard for Gallardo was showing out of the final corner. There's your lead trio. Sandra Mariani from Yasport that builds and runs these Castrol Honda factory cars and the Honda for Norbert Mikulic. Yeah, Montero quicker that time around than Banani, and Banani's pace should get worse and worse, and Montero should stay more stable. But uh, Rob Huff won't want to stay behind Montero for long, so uh, yeah, I think Thiago may be getting asked to get on with it. Well, Banani's last lap, 207.8, his best, 207.3, so he's only half a second away from his fastest lap. That's pretty good pace still from the car, but there are eight laps remaining. You can see Gabriele Tarquini already starting to wash out a little wide on the extra three and running into four, and Ivan Muller closer again. That gives him another car length. He's taking another bite out of what slender advantage Gabriele has kept, and you can see Tarquini's Lada sliding a lot more now, early in the race, than Muller's Citroën is. Yeah, the Ladas have, have had quite a loose setup uh, in terms of the balance being more towards oversteer all weekend. So, um, yeah, I think they've got quite a lot of rotation in that Lada, which I think has made the car very quick to drive. But we've seen the Lada drivers made a lot of mistakes, so probably not easy to drive. Well, not a great getaway from the Lada drivers. Not a very quick one from Medi Banani either. Watch Thiago Montero, looks in the gap up the middle, finds that that is closed. Here comes Montero towards us. That gap is closing, so he goes to plan B and goes down the inside into turn one. And Rob Huff follows him. This is Thiago's view, and it's a great example of a thinking racing driver. This is Tarquini and Valente. That's out of turn two. Then made contact later on. Bernani smoking that unladen rear wheel down into corner 13. Monster long corner. That's the one that's really going to brutalise the tyres on all these front wheel drive cars. Yeah, the only thing Bernani's really got going for him is that the two best places to overtake on this circuit are in the fast section. And the Citroen is actually very, very quick in a straight line. Yeah. Um, so although the Honda is clearly the faster car, it's not that easy to get by. I saw the shades of the turbo diesel Seat Leon versus the BMWs, where the BMWs had great speed into the corners, and the Seat could then hold them up and pick up on the exit and leave them under acceleration as the torque worked for them. Let's hear Banani's team, what they got to say. Allez, Benny, les cars sont des constants pour le moment. Continue à pousser, on dégrade de la même manière. Allez, on lâche rien. OK, they're saying the Ekar e Constant, that's a, you're maintaining an even lead. So he said, essentially, keep doing what you're doing. And that's, you know, they're not getting any closer, and Bernani can really see that, but it's just a kind of little massage of the ego. You're doing a great job, keep doing what you're doing. They can't get to you, keep it up. Yeah, Bernani's just got to stay very, very clean and tidy. He can't afford any mistakes. If he doesn't make a mistake, then he's got half a chance. But there's a long way to go in this race. We've still yeah. got seven laps, and uh, Bernani's tyres are going to get worse and worse. But then, in the slipstream behind him, so are Thiago's and so are Rob's, because their tyres will be working harder in the corners, especially the quick ones, because the aerodynamics in the turbulent air, the wash from Bernani's car, will be less efficient. So they, too, will be suffering Possibly not as much, but they too will be suffering. And of course, we talked about the cooling issue with Gabrielli's car, with uh, Valente's car. The other thing with the turbulent airflow is that the cooling systems in the Honda won't be working to optimum efficiency. And the hotter the engine gets, as with any car, the less power it will tend to produce once it gets beyond an optimum level. So. Absolutely, but it's still advantage Honda. Uh, I'd much rather have those problems with the 80 kilos that uh, poor old Manny Banani's got to carry right now. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right about the cooling. However, it's only sort of 25, 26 degrees here. Yeah. And when you consider the world touring cars sometimes go to circuits where we see, see temperatures getting up to nearly 40, um, we should be okay. Well, Montero is right in the toe behind Medi Banani. This is real pressure for a driver like Banani, though. He's got an ex Grand Prix driver behind him. He's got a world champion behind him. He knows their cars are at least as fast, and that's all they need. 
and he is a privateer driver in a privateer team. A admittedly, it's the fastest car, but he is still relatively inexperienced. Thiago was in Formula One when Medi was doing the odd Renault Clio race. You know, there's the, 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 the level difference. He's got to withstand 65, 70 kilometers of high speed aggression without putting a single foot wrong. And that's the pressure that will be nagging in his mind. And he's got to forget what's in the mirror and look in front. Absolutely. And, you know, Medi's been in this championship for, what, sort of seven years now or so? And uh, he's really matured, I think, in the last sort of 12 months. Let's hear what the Sitchin team have got to say to Ivar Muller, who currently lies fifth. OK, he's saying uh, pay attention to Jose. He's picking up time in the other sectors. So Muller is quicker in sector one. But historically, this weekend, Lopez has been a lot quicker in sector two, and that appears to be being borne out again in the twisty stuff. He's closing in behind Muller. Of course, now he's been a few car lengths back. He's cooled his brakes and his engine a little, and now he's closing right in, and he is all over the back of Ivan. And Ivan is still stuck behind Gabriele Tarquini. He can't get by, despite ostensibly having the quickest car in the business because he set pole position yesterday. Yeah, though I'm surprised at Gabrielli's race pace. Gabrielli's fastest lap, 207.47. That is the fifth quickest lap. Ivan was only seven thousandths of a second quicker than Gabrielli on his very best lap of the race. Last time round, Gabrielli 206.1, Ivan 206.2. It looks like Gabrielli is struggling with, uh, with his race pace, and uh, he's got a much lighter car than the Citroëns, uh, but, uh, yeah, Lada's still, still struggling. And Evans well in the toe now, coming down into turn one. Tarquini is going to make him go the long way round. And I tell you what, if Lopez sees Ivan get through easily, he's not to expect that that will be the case for him. The door will be shut very differently on Lopez than it will on Muller. And Gabrielli again. This is line and length, isn't it? This is hostile bowling, and he's just got to defend his wicket. That's all he can do. He's not going to catch the lead trio, but fourth is better than the back of the queue, where's Norby eighth? And if one car gets through, they're all going straight by Tarquin. Unlike the battle for the lead, uh, this is where the car behind, the IE van, has the straight line speed advantage. So if he can get a bit of a run on Gabrielli, he's got half a chance. It's going to be a much easier task than I would say Montero has of getting past Banani at this stage of the race. The problem in Ivan's mind, of course, always has to be Miss Q and Lopez has gone by and Lopez already has a points lead over him. You know, those are all the dynamics. For, for, from the outside, OK, they're just following each other around. Not even remotely, but Lopez smokes it down the inside, and that's exactly what the drama is going to be for Ivar Muller. If Lopez gets inside him and they have a Tarquini Valente moment, then suddenly Ivan's off in the weeds with damage, and he wants to start the main race on pole. He's going to have to let Lopez go rather than risk an issue, because Lopez forced the issue there. There was no question, I'm down the inside, I'm coming through. You're going to have to open the steering, and in the end, Ivan had to let him go. Bernani still leading here, though, in his Sebastian Loeb Citroen. On board with Rob Huff flying in third place. Jaga Montero in second. Mehdi Bernani leading for Sebastian Loeb, for Citroen, for Morocco. And that last will be as important to him as any other aspect of that trio. Although this, uh, this race is one lap shorter than the, uh, race, the second race, uh, many Banani's tyres are going to start to get very, very tired now. Uh, four laps to go, but uh, I think you'll see his pace start to drop off a little bit more very, very soon. He's already lapping a second slower than he was earlier in the race. Um, and Thiago is still right with him. It's just that straight line speed advantage Banani has that's uh, preventing him from being passed, I think. And uh, I have to say, Rob Huff's being a uh, very, very team game. Well, let's see what the Honda team have to say. Thiago in second. Still very far from the straight line on acceleration. Pushing and pushing. Yeah. Thiago reflecting exactly what you're saying, Richard, that Bernani is still very fast in the straight line. And there are three good long straights here. And that makes life very difficult 
for the Honda behind. Without many making a mistake, it's very, very difficult for Thiago. And the, the infield is just very, very difficult to pass. All the, all the corners lead, lead into each other, unless you do something like a little bit lungy, like Lopez did on Ivan only a lap or so ago. This is Norby going by Ted Björk, and that's a view also of Lopez inside Muller. So we were watching from the outside, Lopez putting himself very deep down the inside of Muller, and at the same time, Norby went by Ted Björk. So that was uh, a dual pass. Norby moved up to seventh as Lopez moved up to fifth. Nani Montero, Huff, oh, in the Sebastian Loeb racing garage. They're not counting their chickens yet. You've got to say, so far, Medi's been inch perfect. He's done at least as good a job in defence as Gabriele Tarquini has done so far in fourth place in the Lada. Yeah, it's uh, entering the crucial phase for Bernani now. As the tyres get older, it'll be very, very difficult for him not to make a mistake, or more difficult. So this is the critical phase of the race for him. And similarly, behind in fourth place, you saw the yellow larder of Tarquini. You could barely see Lopez Citroen behind because he's all over the back of him. Yeah, further down the uh, the order off shot, uh, Mikulitz is uh, really on the back of him. That's all now, he's three tenths behind. Yeah, so Norby. Norby and Ivan have got history in the final corner here. Lap 9 of 11 are starting now. This is the anti-penultimate to go. And still, Norbert Mikulis, uh, big upon Medi Benani, holds the lead. Cameron Tarquini, little touch there from Jose Maria Lopez. Lopez using the fender, as they say, in NASCAR racing. Gabrielli. Classic rule of front-wheel drive racing, keep your right foot buried and allow the car to pull itself out of that tank slapper. And luckily, Lopez didn't apply too much pressure, but he is eager to get by. Gabrielli very defensive, and uh, this uh, could be good news for Ivan, because uh, while they're squabbling, it could provide Ivan an opportunity to get ahead of his teammate again. Could be good news for Norby as well, because if they get bottled up further behind Tarquini, Norby has dropped Ted Bjork a couple of car lengths back, so Norby now can be the loose cannon and have a, a go at Muller as Muller's trying to attack Lopez, stroke to defend Norby at the same time. It's an invidious position to be in when you're trying to do both. Oh, and through goes Montero. Lunged at Mehdi Benani and jubilation on the Asport pit wall. We caught the very end of that move. Thiago has got the lead, and that is Benani done for, because Huff now will be all over the back of him. He wants a Castrol Honda 1-2, and here's the way it worked. Exactly the same place. They dive to the inside in corner eight, and through he goes. And that was the only chance for Thiago, because uh, in the faster sections, just didn't have a straight line speed, even in the slipstream of Benny. But, uh, yeah, Bernani will be well awake to that trick now, so it's going to be even harder for Rob to get past. Yep. But we've still got three laps to go, and, uh, yeah, Bernani's tyres must be getting very tired now with that 80 kilos that he's having to carry around. It's where we saw Lopez pass Muller, isn't it? It's where we saw Norby uh, pass Ted Björk in the same lap. So it is one of the overtaking positions. Now Montero is going to scuttle away. Banani is going to desperately try and hold off Rob Huff. He always says, doesn't he, uh, Matey, that finishing on the podium in this kind of a field is like a win for him. You know, when he did actually win, though, that was just quite astonishing uh, display of emotion. Behind, still, Gabriele Tarquini holding off the Citroëns of Jose Maria Lopez and Ivan Muller. Lopez just had to get slightly out of the throttle there. Yep. Caught right up underneath Gabrielli under braking. And there's Franz Fischer. Problems at the right rear of the car. Looked like a brake fire there briefly. Little fast fire as he went off. Yeah, it might be an oil line from the front of the car just catching the yep. exhaust, and that's what's uh, got some oil. Oh, and that's fire. exactly what they don't need next week. They will be racing in Hungary. They do not want their car to burn out in a gravel trap here. And Ferenc Fischer will be desperately trying to pull on fire extinguishers. Whether they'll work under the floor, I can't imagine. We saw the rescue crews on the way. We might end up with a red flag here. Fischer bails out. And this is horrifying news for his team boss, Zoltan Zengo. They've only got one car of their two running at the moment. And that is now well ablaze. 
Yeah, at least he's out safely, but uh, yes, we need some uh, fire marshals. At, well, they are uh, there over the barriers, but they're in the gravel trap on the final corner. We might end up with the race being run a lap short. This is lap 10 of 11. Tarquini in fourth, ahead of Lopez, Muller, Michelitz. Montero leads from Bonani and Huff. Montero a second ahead of Bonani at the line. There's the Sebastian Lowe racing garage, looking fairly sanguine about everything. And that's the factory Citroen garage. Well, any points you pick up in the opening race when you've qualified in the front for the main race are a Brucey bonus. And they have kept their cars clean and in one piece. Yeah, now Thiago's away, he's just pulled, uh, yeah, and that's a uh, second, well over a second on, uh, on Medi on that one lap, but yeah, Huff can't seem to quite get on the back of him at the moment. Again, Huffy's been third in the queue, so maybe his temperatures and pressures are starting to worry him a little. Last lap for Tarquini, one lunge from Lopez, going to go around the outside into turn two. OK, everybody, hold your breath, because this could get very bouncy. Tarquini with the line, Lopez can't hold on. If that was Muller, he would have let him go. Yes, I agree. I agree entirely. <laughs> now, can Lopez catch him? No, he can't catch him by surprise down into three. And look around the outside, Norby. No, not at the garage, there's Norby. Lights it up around the outside of Muller. He's got some grip in reserve, thinks he can get Muller and Lopez, and Lopez and Muller are side by side, and Norby is going to get Muller and Lopez. Holy cow, how is he doing that? That is stunning driving from Mikulic. He's invented passes that we've never seen here. Nearly got Lopez as well. Muller comes back at him now. Muller will be burning with the embarrassment of being caught by Mikulic like that. And Ted Björk is right behind them watching the action. Just got mugged, didn't he? Completely mugged. I don't know Mikulic's found mugged. the grip. He just, uh, just suddenly got a bit fed up of, of being behind these three... Uh, these three chaps and threw it down the outside. I wonder if Norby has been cleaning that line for two or three laps while we've not noticed. If he has, then kudos. If he hasn't, then even more kudos to him. And that has sort of blown the pressure relief valve for Tarquini because suddenly Muller and Lopez go, what, 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 what? Never mind Tarquini, let's just try and hold on to what we've got. And that allows Tarquini to scuffle away and he should finish here in fourth place. So Montero is going to head to victory in the opening race here. Here he comes through 13, out of 14. The chequered flag awaits. Victory for Thiago Montero. Second place for Mehdi Banani and third for Rob Huff. And Gabriele Tarquini will not be caught. Fourth place for him. Fifth position for the points leader, Jose Maria Lopez. Sixth, Norbo Michelis. Seventh, Ivan Muller. And eighth place for Ted Bjork, Tom Chilton ninth, Frederick Eggblom in tenth place. Both Volvos in the points in eighth and tenth. Uh, is that Tom's first points finish? I can't I think remember. So. I think it is though. Nicky Katzberg eleventh, Hugo Valente in twelfth for the Larder team. And of Gregoire de Moustier, John Philippi, Tom Coronel, and James Thompson. Coronel all at sixes and sevens this weekend. Tomo, first time ever in the uh, Chevrolet, couldn't get past Tom Coronel. It took most of the race for Thiago Montero to get past Mehdi Banani and claim the win. The FIA WTCC is delivered by DHL. Via WTCC brought to you by Oscaro.com, original auto spare parts online. Victory for the factory Hondas, first and third in the opening race here in Slovakia. Took a long while to get by Mehdi Banani, but in the end, Thiago Montero managed it. Rob Huff ran out of laps and or tyres and brakes or pace somewhere in the mix could not find a way past the Moroccan who ends up in second position in the opener here at the Slovakia ring. Well, frantic action all the way up and down the field and some stalwart defence from Medi Benani and from Gabriele Tarquini whose Lada hung on to fourth position after what was a luckless weekend for him in Paul Ricard.
Alex Legui is down in the pit lane. She's with our winner, Thiago Montero. A fantastic race and a brilliant result for Honda. Thiago Montero, you are now the new current champion. Congratulations, what a race. Champion leader. Championship <laughs> leader. Well, that's okay, I'll take it anyway. Uh, yeah, well, we did a good start. That was, of course, very important. Um, Benny, Benani was uh, driving very well. It was not easy to surprise him. Um, I, you know, I did. Uh, I tried to save my tires as much as possible, but putting pressure on him. And uh, when I saw an opportunity, I went for it. There was not many, so I'm glad uh, it was the right timing. And uh, yeah, I'm just really glad uh, it was not the easiest weekend for my side of the team this week, this weekend. So I'm glad we took this opportunity. It was very important. Of course, good points for the team. Rob did a good recovery as well. I think third, uh, Norby probably up there as well. So well done, everybody. Congratulations. It was a really good job. I mean, he had to battle hard to get by Banani, but he got the breakthrough he needed. And again, just caught Banani's defense, tiny little bit off guard, lunged to the inside in a place where we saw three or four successful maneuvers. And that shot shows you just how convoluted the interior part of this triangular layout is. So the opening race, not won by Hugo Valente's Lada. He was the pole man, but he ended up rather further down in 12th position. It was Thiago Montero who was victorious. Mehdi Benani second ahead of Rob Huff, who completes the podium. Tarquini, Lopez and Michelis. Muller, Björk, Chilton and Ekblom, your top 10. Nicky Katzberg, 11th and teammate Hugo Valente in their Ladas in 12th place. So Valente went from pole to 12th, not entirely of his own volition. So there you go, that is the way they finished. And for Muller, at least the car made it all the way through the opening race in one piece. And he will start the main race from pole. We'll have a game to try and close the points gap on Thiago Montero and perhaps for Muller, more critically, on Jose Maria Lopez, who will start behind Muller in third in the main race, but who came here as our championship leader ahead of three Honda drivers with Muller only in sixth position Portuguese colors for the fans of Targa Montero and that is it for our opening race here in Slovakia The opening race of the week.